Hi, it's Contex here with a new series about the latest Linux from Scratch 11.1. So what I'm going to do with this is to go through Linux from Scratch. We're going to try again something a little bit different. Um, what I'm going to do is to do the install as if it was for a live USB. Um, now I could build directly onto the USB because the USBs are a little bit slower especially writing what I'm going to do is create a um, virtual drive if you like like an image of the USB um, work with that and then when it's all done just copy that image back to the USB and configure it to boot and uh, hopefully it will all, all boot into uh, the Linux from scratch that I've created uh, so Linux from scratch, if you're not aware, it's a source built distribution. Um, there's the home page for the website www.linuxfromscratch.org. Um, recent years it's had regular releases every six months, beginning of March and beginning of September. So as you can see it's the 2nd of March today. Um, yeah, so it's just been released, the latest version as I say is 11.1. Um, so once you're at the home page, fastest way to get to the project is either clicking this link up here or this link here. And there's a, some description about the project itself. Next thing we need to go to is to click on read online and you want to go for the stable LFS link. Um, there is a couple of other links here. The errata where any, well it says security vulnerabilities there, but th this would have any errors that are found with the book since it was released. Now obviously it's quite early. There have been occasions where they've released it with errors. and um, Unfortunately there have been errors on, on the first day it's been released. Uh, at the moment you can see there's nothing there. There's another link here which again has probably not got any information specifically for this version so so we're building the latest version 11.1 and uh, it's, as you can see there there's nothing currently as you'd probably expect although there could be a you know it's a day, a day since it's been released there could be a security advisory generally um, if I'm building just for the learning experience or for something like this from recording video I wouldn't bother with the security I'll just get on with building the book as it is however if you're building it with a view to using the final result as as a working operating system then um, I would I would advise following the security link and following the pages and the advisors that they have there um, there is a development which um, currently wouldn't be much different than Stables. I say the Stables just been released yesterday, but as time goes on before the next release, that will obviously be more and more different to the previous Stable release. Um, and that links there. There is a System D version of LFS, um, which you can access through this link. I don't normally follow that because two reasons really I'm not really that enamored with system D yes I know it boots quicker but it's a lot more um, work to get a system D system running uh, also it still plays second fiddle as far as I can see to the Linux from scratch team in that it's not at the top of the page to me the the prime way of installing Linux from scratch is still the system v version which is the first set of links here current stable um, until that changes i will still be demonstrating the system v version of installing lfs and as i say it's a little bit simple i think there's uh, around about five packages uh, fewer to install with the system v version with the system d there's five more packages basically so it is a little bit simpler. <clears throat> As I say, when if, if and when that changes, then I will be 
demonstrating System D. I have built System D once a few years ago, um, and you can find that video if you really want to see how it was done. Um, well, a couple of years ago, I, I wouldn't imagine much would have changed, but it would be a good guide if you do want to follow a System D installation. Um, however, rather than using that version of Linux from scratch, I would install the latest version, but as I say, use, use that video as a guide. So I'll go into here, and this is the book itself. This is the contents for the whole of the book. So all these instructions here will tell you how to build Linux from scratch. Um, I can understand this is why I do these videos. If you come to this, you've never built Linux from scratch before, it's quite daunting. Um, it took me, I think, one or two attempts to get a working system when I first did it, which is probably nearly 20 years ago now. Um, so hopefully these videos will help you in situations where things aren't quite obvious. The book is much better than it used to be. There's a lot more information in the book, a lot more warnings and information about how to uh, keep an eye out for certain things, things that might trip you up. But even then, there still seems to be issues where things aren't, aren't quite obvious, maybe. So I won't go through everything in this book. It's I always say this in my videos. I advise you to go through the book and read it first of all. Um, have a little bit of patience, read the book, get an understanding of what the book's about, how things are done. Don't just dive in because, well, you're not aware of the process if you've never done it before. So it's a good idea to read the book. Read certainly the preface, uh, introduction, um, also all of this uh, second part here, so chapter two, three, and four. Certainly, this important preliminary material that that gives an idea of how the installation is done. It uses a cross comp compilation, although technically it's in one way you can view it as a cross compilation, in another way it's not a cross compilation because you're building on the system that is the target um, architecture. So you're using cross compilation techniques, but the to a purist, it's not a cross-compile because you're not compiling for a different architecture. Um, I would skip all the actual specific instructions for the packages, or, or not skip them maybe, but just glance through them. You don't need to read them because a lot of them are quite simpler. They're just the commands. You may want to read some of the more complex ones, such as GCC, there's a bit more information, uh, glibc as well, because uh, they're quite critical, they're part of the tool chain. But certainly most of the other ones, you can probably just skim through them, skip over. Again, Section 8, which is the actual system that's built. So prior to that, these packages are just built to create an environment that can create the final LFS system that is the one that will be used. And whatever's built here gets discarded eventually. It's not needed. It's only needed for building the actual Linux from scratch system. So all of Chapter 8 is about building the system. You may want to start picking up and reading the remainder of the book. As you can see, this bit's about configuring the system, so it's creating config files to um, specify uh, the network capabilities, the host name, things like that. Um, then there's a chapter about how to make the system bootable, and finally, the last bit, closing it all down and rebooting into the new system. The appendices can be good, although a lot of it is a bit dry. It's, um, for example, this bit's all about the scripts that are installed automatically, so you don't have to create your own scripts from hand. I've done that for you. Um, some bit about UDEV rules and licenses, so you may want to actually just use this as a reference rather than reading it, although, you know, if you want to learn as much as possible, you might want to examine the scripts and read them to see how and what they do. So, yes, certainly, as I say, read through as much as you can before attempting to build you might want to read through when it's downloading you know the packages you've got a slow internet connection it'll give you you know a few minutes to read some stuff um, but yeah once you understand or have got a basic concept of how it's built it'll it'll make the actual task of building Linux from scratch much much easier so I'll just go through these links um, 
uh, like I said, I won't dwell on too much. Just some information about the project there, how it was begun, intended audience, what architectures are um, supported. Uh, officially, 64-bit and 32-bit Intel architecture. So that's any AMD 64 or Intel x86 32-bit. So basically any PC effectively will build this. Um, support for um, older Intel 32-bit chips uh, only begins with 486 chips. So 386 um, not supported and earlier architectures weren't supported anyway, uh, weren't ever supported. It was only 386s that were supported directly. So um, if you are thinking about digging out an old machine to try this on, which um, I thoroughly recommend, it's uh, certainly experience. It would take time, take hours, maybe days even, depending on how old the system is. Um, and if it's really old, it could take months. Um, it's, it's certainly a good way to learn using an old machine because the machine is going slower. It gives you time to think and to read what's going on. on the, I found myself on a fast machine, you tend to want to just keep on working as fast as the machine allows you. So, you know, you run a command, it completes, you want to run the next command in. On a slow machine, you run the command, you've got to wait for it to finish. So, you know, you might want to read the book or you might want to read about a command you just read that you don't understand. So it's a it's a lot better learning experience if you can uh, install Linux from scratch on an older machine. And it may be that you've got an old laptop in the cupboard or an old PC that you used to have. It's not doing anything. That would be an ideal machine to, to build Linux from scratch on. You can, of course, build Linux from scratch on a virtual machine. I've done it myself. The first video I did on YouTube was in a virtual machine. There were some issues with it. Um, and also I've had comments on some videos about people using virtual machines where things haven't quite worked right I don't know enough about virtual machines to say yeah you need to do this that or the other so I couldn't really help and in the end I think a couple of people did resort to using real machines and they didn't have the same problems so I would recommend that if you can use a real machine you can get a hold of a machine or like I say if you've got one stuck in the cupboard not doing anything that would be my advice. Only use a virtual machine if you really have to, or if you understand that if you do get a problem that you know you, it's really down to you to fix it. Um, it. It's probably the virtual machine that's affecting the build. That virtual machines are brilliant. Don't get me wrong, but they're not 100% perfect. They're not 100% emulators. It is, it is an environment working in another environment, uh, and certainly for everyday stuff, they're probably fine. But Compiling is quite critical. Um, if if something gets compiled just slightly wrong, it can affect the whole system and subsequent packages that get built. So um, it's probably why virtual machines aren't quite the best environment to work in. Um, saying that, with uh, getting good compiles throughout the book uh, in chapter eight, there's a lots of advice about getting tests done. Um, many of the packages come with tests to uh, test the binaries that have been compiled to ensure that they've been compiled correctly. The book recommends that the tests are run. I would recommend that the tests are run as well. Um, yes, it probably it could double or, or more, you know, maybe even three times as long to build LFS, but without those packages, you haven't really got an inkling um, as to whether what you've built is usable or reliable. In the early days, I, I was compiling on a 486. It was quite slow. I think it used to take about two weeks to um, build Linux from scratch. It was the only spare machine I had at the time. And um, I didn't used to bother with the tests. I did used to have little things go wrong I wasn't sure about. And uh, it wasn't until I started testing that I could see the value in them. Uh, so I highly recommend that you spend time running the test. I'll be running the test so you can see what the results should be with, you know, how I, um, when I run them, what, what results I get so you can compare. Some of the bigger packages such as GCC can produce slightly different results depending on the um, architecture of the machine, depending on the speed of the machine and so on. Um, but I'll explain about that more when we get to that. 
so yeah, those are some things that bear in mind when you're building a machine. Some recommendations as I've, I've been building Linux from scratch for nearly 30 years on and off. Um, certainly been doing it regularly since I've been doing these videos for uh, YouTube. Um, and um, yeah, I, I would recommend, if, especially if it's the first time, or you've maybe only built it once or twice before, uh, to to do the tests. So yeah, some information about the architect supported architectures. Um, I have built on an ARM once. I have got done some videos of building for Raspberry Pi. It worked. The only thing that was um, cast some doubts in my mind was some of the tests didn't run, but it seemed to be that the support for the well, certainly the test for um, ARM devices is not complete, um, but the system did seem to run okay. Um, and I know other people, and there are other projects that have used LFS for compiling to an ARM system, so it does seem that it it would be okay but certainly as far as the books concerned the only really official architectures as I say that are supported are Intel stroke AMD 32-bit 64-bit processors so prerequisites is some information there um, ideally you'd need you'd need to know a little bit about the command line how to use commands and so on although the book gives you all the commands um, it does help if you come across a problem. Um, you know, it's quite easy to copy and paste stuff and miss the character off the beginning or the end of what you're copying and pasting, or something might not work right because you know something's happened. Um, it, so it's good to know your way around the command line a little bit, uh, some basic commands, um, and some links there to uh, that would hopefully help. Uh, just, description here about the standards that LFS tries to adhere to uh, so I won't dwell on that rationale for packages in the book so I believe over the years some people have questioned why, why is XYZ package in the book and why isn't this package in the book so they try to justify on this page why things are here most of the packages I'd, I'd probably say I don't know really probably 80-90% of the packages are absolute requirements to getting a working system there's probably one or two that maybe you could do without without um, for example less um, you could probably get away without using less but if you're debugging or trying to track a problem down you want to look at a log file then less is certainly a lot more useful than more is where you can only you know page down in one direction um, and maybe something like uh, Vi, I think is here, or Vim. Again, to build a system, you probably wouldn't need it if you're just copying and pasting commands from a book. But again, there is a configuration part. So rather than just copy and paste and alter what you're pasting in, um, you can copy and paste and then use Vim or Vi to uh, edit what you've copied and pasted. So again, it's not absolutely necessary. It just makes life a, a lot easier as part of the installation. Typography, so this explains um, the typography used in the book, um, emphasis and so on, how to interpret what you see on the page, so that that's quite useful to pick out um, what different parts of the book means on, on the page. This is the layout of the book, so different parts of the book, the major sections if you like, and within each part there's the chapters, and within the chapters, there's like subsections that break down generally into packages, individual packages. This explains about the security and the errata, as I've already mentioned. And so we go on to the introduction now for building Linux from scratch. So here, how to build an LFS system. So again, it goes into a bit more detail about the individual chapters and what they are. Um, as I've sort of touched on, the first few chapters are setting up an environment to work with. Then chapter five, chapter six, chapter seven are creating a temporary Linux from scratch environment where we've got a basic set of tools to build the actual final system, which is everything that's done in chapter eight 
all the packages are built there that we use in the final system. And then, as I previously mentioned before, the last few chapters are all about configuring and preparing the system ready for its first boot. So what's new since the last release? So these are all the um, packages and their versions and um, the packages that have, uh, patches that have been added. You can see nothing's been removed this time, so it's just a few more patches. Generally, the patches are either to fix things to work in a way that the Linux from scratch team want to work. Uh, maybe it's a fix to adhere to one of the standards they want to adhere to. Or maybe it's just uh, an, one package has been updated and that affects another package that hasn't been updated to use with the original package that it depends on. So it's a little patch, a little fix to get it to work with that. Um, and some of them may be security or bug fixes even. Uh, so here's a change log if you're interested in what's happened over the last um, six months or so since the previous release, what changes have been made. Resources, so if you need some help, um, I can give limited help on the channel. If you leave me a comment, I can try and help. But generally, if it's a bit more involved, it's, it's hard on the YouTube channel because um, it's difficult putting logs down and seeing what what can help do to help but I'll do my best to help just don't count on me actually giving a solution you're probably better off searching on the internet um, looking at the FAQs here on the links from scratch screen um, or even joining the mailing list and asking the developers directly and again some more information about getting help there um, th this is important things to mention here is you know what version you're using what you're doing at the time what part of the book you're trying to follow um, and th there's an important note there deviating from the book does not mean that it will not help you but you know be honest about what you're doing if you're trying to do something that's not in the book you know just be honest about it um, otherwise, the assumption will be that you're trying to do something as it is in the book, and if you're not, the, you know that, that, that's not very helpful to people that are trying to help you. And again, compilation problems don't just give an error such as this. That's meaningless. You really need to include all this sort of stuff. Um, as an example, you know what the command was that failed. That includes the error and the trace that, as it comes out of that error. Um, yeah, there's a read me here about asking smart questions. So basically it says if you ask a question in the right way, you're going to get a good answer. If you ask a question in the wrong way, you're not going to get much help at all because people don't won't know what you're asking. So that's, that's quite a good read. Uh, 